Talking about user stories uh, is easy. I mean, um, like so many things, they, they, they're not developed just to sit there and look pretty. So the question is, how are they used in the life cycle of development? So let's have a look at that. That picture there uh, shows roughly uh, the life cycle of things. And user stories are used in their initial form in the planning and scheduling of things. Scheduling, not down to the precise details, but scheduling in terms of the relative priorities of things on the stack, um, of the, the backlog stack. So that's where they're used initially. In estimating, developers are responsible for estimating the effort required to implement the user story. And um, yeah, they, you, know, you, you gain experience and you, you learn how to estimate, you learn how to prioritize, you learn when the story is not well enough elaborated and when to go back for more. So this is not too difficult. Accurate estimates do come with practice. Uh, this, this has been observed in a number of teams that when they start out, um, they might be a little bit, um, bit varied in their estimates, but you're not going to be badly out. But with, with a certain amount of experience, and we're not talking about a lot of experience, maybe a couple of months or something, then people get very good at estimating um, the effort involved in the user story. My own experience with estimation is that um, software engineers were, were actually very, very good at uh, estimating the effort of the work that they could think of. The only problem is they didn't think of everything. And so afterwards they'd go back and uh, we'd find that for the things that they thought about, their accurates were very accurate. Their estimates are very accurate. But their schedule was messed up by a whole lot of things they, they didn't think about. Uh, usually the preparation or the, um, the housekeeping type of stuff that they had to do as well. Or the fact that you know, the file system wasn't there and they had to create it. All this kind of thing. So that comes with experience. In the Scrum construction life cycle, uh, user stories simply are collected into the backlog and prioritized so that the um, highest priority user story is at the top of the stack. And the, um, the a, a number of user stories are pitched into the Scrum um, for this particular sprint. And so they use there in that fashion. That, that they, you know, presumably the developer picks one off the top of the stack, goes and talks to the user, and starts implementing the uh, story. Now for more information on this, and there's quite a lot of information available uh, on user stories. Um, there's a collection of websites there. Um, one of the, the more clean and concise descriptions of user stories and illustrations of them is Mike Conn's website there at Mountain Goat Software. Now in summary then, system requirements are needed because IT systems require precision, whereas um, humans get by with general direction, so we do need to be uh, fairly precise about um, when we're trying to specify a computer system. And this requires more than just a general waving of hands and, and verbal description. Requirements are needed by many different stakeholders, not just the developer. We, we're talking about uh, all the designers as well as the developer. Um, Requirements can be specified with user stories, usage narratives, use cases, um, and uh, decision tables, and, and much more. The, the, the most general is basically a contract uh, where everything is specified in, in paragraphs. Specifications are complete when the developer can convince the business owner that the system will solve the problem. And specifications are good enough when all the stakeholders can do their jobs. 